The approach to psychotherapy, which my collaborators and I have been developing at Vanderbilt University, is based on an interpersonal model. We have found it useful to view a patient's problems as disturbances in interpersonal relationships. We also place a good deal of emphasis on understanding the transactions between patient and therapist in the here and now. In a nutshell, we feel that interpersonal experiences, typically those in early childhood, have made a person sick. The purpose of psychotherapy is to provide a new relationship that can make the person well, or at least mitigate earlier damage. Together with Freud, I see psychotherapy as a form of education or after education, or in Alexander's phrase, as a corrective emotional experience. In short, therapy involves learning, and we now have to ask, how does it work, and how does it come about? I think it can happen in two major ways. First, the therapist attempts to, attempt, uh, to create a good human relationship and to understand the patient's inner world. This is done through communication of interest, through caring, through respect, and above all, through empathic listening. The patient must come to feel secure and free to express himself or herself. Second, while a good empathic relationship seems to be a major healing factor in all forms of psychotherapy, it is often not enough. The problem is precisely that the patient cannot take proper advantage of what a good human relationship has to offer. This is so because as a result of hurtful experiences in early childhood, patients have developed maladaptive patterns of behavior which in adult life create serious obstacles in their relationships. Freud made the revolutionary discovery that people tend to transfer feelings, attitudes, and behaviors from the past to the present and to reenact with significant people in their current life scenarios that are rooted in troublesome interpersonal relationships that stem from the past. For example, a patient may relate to the therapist as a powerful parent figure and assume the role of a weak and dependent child. In this, and in many other ways, patients rigidly cling to the past, and they do so by what I call cyclical maladaptive patterns. A major task for the therapist is, one, to identify one of these patterns in the patient's life, second, to bring it to the patient's attention, and third, to help the patient explore the ramifications in his or her current life. While such a maladaptive pattern may become apparent already in a first interview, it may take quite some time before it can be worked through and therapeutic change can occur. The therapist can be helpful in this because he or she is both a participant and an observer in what transpires in the patient-therapist relationship. As an observer, the therapist recurrently steps outside and comments on what transpires in the interaction. The therapist's own emotional reactions to the patient can also be of great value in therapy they can also be, at times, a great hindrance. In sum, therapy involves learning, learning that is cognitive learning, and learning that's experiential learning. That is, the patient learns to use the context of a good relationship with a sympathetic and empathic listener to acquire new or different patterns of thinking 
feeling and acting. Thank you.